One of the things that's quite difficult when using simulations is we give you lots of abstract concepts, principles, uh, thoughts, but when we want to translate that into a specific game, a specific simulation, it's quite tricky. How am I actually going to turn this idea into something that students can use? And with that in mind, I want in this video to do something somewhat different from my other pieces, which is talk you through how I created a game because I think that might help illustrate some of the practical uh, and conceptual difficulties that uh, one faces and the ways you can overcome them. The game I'm going to talk about is uh, what became a crisis game. So a relatively simple uh, simulation uh, but one which does its job quite neatly and efficiently. Remember that the starting point of any simulation is being clear about your learning objectives. What is it you're trying to do? And in this case, uh, I'm working in the context of teaching my students about negotiation. So that's taught in the context of a politics degree, but actually it has a fairly general import that for all social sciences we're interested in social interaction um, and negotiation is part of that. And clearly that speaks also to uh, debates about transferable skills. So this is something where I want to introduce the concept of negotiation to students in a hands-on practical kind of way. So I want to give them something that is going to be engaging, that's going to show them some of the dynamics and processes that we encounter in uh, negotiation, which is going to start them thinking about the different elements of negotiation that are present. So this is my starting point, that I want to open up negotiation to students. And I want to keep that in mind uh, all the way through. So how am I going to do that? And this is the second step. It's all very well saying, I want to introduce negotiation. Well, how do I introduce negotiation? Okay, I need to have some kind of scenario where students can come in relatively cold, uh, do something relatively short, but which will still allow them to do a variety of different things. So what are the kinds of things I want them to do? I want them to think about uh, the role of knowledge, the role of their personal attitudes, um, the role of their interpersonal skills, so how do they relate to other people, how do they go about negotiating with each other, compromise, they stand tough, they try and force other people to do what they want. And I'd like to connect it, I suppose that's the second dimension, to some substantive material. So let's try and pull it into uh, the politics degree that I know my students will be doing. So something political. Okay, so I've got my idea. I've got some thoughts about what are the kind of elements I want in there. How can I achieve those? When I was putting this uh, simulation together, I threw around a number of different ideas. But actually, if I'm frank, one of the things I did was think, well, what games are out there already? What experiences have I had or that I'm aware of that might be relevant to this kind of scenario? And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. Some of the best ideas I've ever had in the classroom have been other people's ideas. That I've taken somebody's model, somebody's approach, uh, used their gameplay, their structure, their paperwork, um, usually with some kind of modification as appropriate, but I've then used it in a very different kind of way. So be comfortable with that uh, sharing of best practice or of practice, um, because it's a very easy way to start to do that. And in this case, I did something fairly similar. What I do is say, okay, if I want to minimise on time, I've got to have something that needs no preparation. So that suggests I need to do something where students come in, they pick up a piece of paper, they read about a uh, situation, and then off they go. So it needs to be something where they can have some kind of knowledge-based and emotional engagement with an issue. Now in politics, uh, we have the advantage that we're often talking about matters of life and death. So let me pick a, a crisis scenario. Uh, I'll make my students members of a committee, a national committee for uh, national uh, emergency relief, something like that. 
I won't give them individual roles because there's no point, because I think that their individual attitudes towards the situation will put them into conflict and will raise the kind of tensions that I want to explore. But I'm going to give them a little scenario, a few paragraphs, talking about, let's say, a terrorist siege scenario. And say at the end, what do you do? Now I might think, I might give them some specific suggestions about what they might do, save the hostages, talk to the terrorists, do something else. Or I might just say, I'm not giving you any direction, away you go. Doing something like that buys into students' learned understanding about issues, for example, here about terrorism, about the nature of state organisation. But it also starts to introduce them to the notions of bureaucratic politics, it starts to introduce them to notions of how committees make decisions. So it's a way of relating their prior knowledge into this particular context. Now remember, the key focus here isn't about terrorism, but rather about negotiation. So the substance of the matter doesn't really come into it very much for me. I'm not particularly interested uh, in what they do. I'm more interested in why they do it. So. I've got a concept, introducing negotiation. I've got a gameplay, which is this crisis scenario. I know roughly what I, I want the students to do, read some information, talk to each other, reach a decision. Okay, I now need to start thinking about more practical kinds of issues. The most obvious practical issue is, how many students do I need to run this? If I'm interested in introducing negotiation, then one of the things I want people to understand is that negotiating when you have more than uh, a small number of people, is really very tricky, regardless of the subject. So, I'm going to need at least, say, a dozen people. But, I also want to make this vaguely feasible as a scenario. I'm going to give them a slightly awkward scenario that raises different kinds of issues. Maybe I'll connect the hostage crisis to uh, some other demand that the hostages want uh, to release a political prisoner, for example. Okay, so we'll start raising different dilemmas. But if I raise lots of dilemmas, then I'm going to get lots of different opinions. And if I have too many people in the room, then it's not going to work. So I need to think about an upper limit as well as a lower limit. And because I haven't given students roles, uh, it's not that I have to write a new role specification for each individual. So it's just the same sheet, you are you, off you go. So I need to work between, say, a dozen and maybe 20 people, because beyond 20 people, it becomes really, really, really hard to do anything. I also need to think about the space that I need. In this case, I need people to be able to have one conversation. So they need to be able to face each other in a circle um, and talk to one another. Now, that means I need a flat room with tables and chairs, ideally with the tables pushed back to the side. Um, Again, if I'm feeling slightly awkward and difficult, I might just not arrange the room. I might just keep it in the normal uh, setup and let the students work out that actually not being able to see each other's face uh, makes it much harder to negotiate. Or I might be nice and I might say, well, let's move the tables back and uh, have the negotiation in the round. So rooming's not too much of an issue. Student numbers aren't too much of an issue. Clearly, if I had decided that I was going to say, you're the chairman, you think this, you're the head of uh, the military staff, you think that, you're the foreign ministry, you think something else, then I need to start thinking about the paperwork that I give them. Because at the moment, I just need a sheet of paper with a, a scenario and the question, what will you do? Um, I need to think a bit about the decision-making process. So the simplest way of doing it is just to say, you all have to agree unanimously, because that's a good way of getting everyone in the group to contribute. Or I might say it's a simple majority, or I might say, if I'm giving roles, uh, these people have to agree and the rest of you don't really matter. Uh, but you can try and influence. And again, you can see how with small things like that, procedural changes, you can change the dynamic of a negotiation. So, I've got my scenario, I've got my core concepts, I know how many students I need, what kind of space I need. I need to think about assessments. Am I going to actually bother to assess this? Now, in this case, because it's an introductory exercise and I want to start off several discussions, I don't really have an interest in it. However, 
If I did want to assess it, I need to think a bit about what I might do in the way of assessment. Am I interested in their interactions with each other, the kind of negotiating skills? And that would be the obvious choice, given that I'm interested in getting the students to think about negotiation. So it would make sense for me to do it that way. Which means I'm not to be able to follow all of these people in the room. So I might do something like use one of these cameras, set it up in the corner, maybe have one in another corner, try and film. Filming uh, is very useful for letting students see what they've done. The difficulty is if lots of people are speaking at the same time, it's hard to get a clear soundtrack. But it's very good for giving a sense. If I was doing this game in, as part of a terrorism module, for example, then I might be more interested in the terrorism aspect of it. You know, how do we deal with terrorists? In which case I could do something on those uh, lines, maybe get them to write an essay or to connect it with uh, a lecture that I'm doing. With all of that, I end up with something that I think still at the end lets me do my core objective, which is introduce negotiation dynamics. I need to think about my feedback, so I need to give them feedback about their negotiation dynamics. Have you noticed how you've done this, how you've done that, the way in which you interact with each other, who speaks, who leads, who follows, those kinds of questions, and we've talked about those elsewhere in the guide, I think they're fairly generic kind of issues. So I need to ask myself, is it simple to explain? Yes. Students pick up the paper, they read it, off we go. Does it make sense? Does it meet my learning objectives? Yes, it does. It clearly is about negotiation. It's relatively short. I can do this in maybe half an hour, which means I've got time to do that in a seminar slot and still have feedback and get them to move the chairs and tables back at the end. <coughs> is it something that adds value? Yes, I think it does. In this case, clearly, because I'm teaching about negotiation, it's good to let them experience negotiation. I could give a lecture and say, here are the processes, here are the dynamics, but this is a way of bringing it to life for them in a very real sense. Could I have done it more simply in another way? Well, I probably could have done a lecture about it, but I think that the value that's added through it is more than worth the time and the effort that's there. And again, I think the point's worth stressing that from that very simple model, and I'll give you a link to this uh, after the video, you can see how you can add elements. That This is just a, maybe a half hour, hour long exercise once you put in the feedback time, but you could add lots of elements. You could sequence a series of uh, crises together to see how students respond, let them think about the consequences of their decisions. You could add subcommittees, or you could give specific roles, or you could make it a real-world scenario rather than some made-up one. You could say, okay, you are this country, and you are this country, and you are having this interaction. 